Abyss's Impossible Piano Song Death Waltz, UN Owen Was Her. Uploaded on October 25th, 2011, millions of people have seen it and other similar uploads over the course of its nine years on YouTube. A large number of people, including myself, had their first foray into the genre of black midi through this video. If you haven't listened to Death Waltz or heard of black midi before, the genre consists of pieces of music with more notes than any one pianist can actually play, or two, or three, etc. In this video, a team of pianists try to tackle the song, and even then it's an incomplete rendition. The song's just too… impossible. This piece is just one of many impossible songs in the black midi genre, which gets its name because if you tried to display the songs on a single musical staff, there are so many notes that they appear black. Black midi is unique, because unlike many other genres, black midi songs scale directly with computer hardware. More and more notes got added to compositions as computers were released that were able to load them, which created an arms race in the community to create compositions with the largest number of notes, with some compositions even including the GPU that was used in their title. This race has culminated in five artists, referred to as blackers, creating compositions with the maximum number of notes the MIDI file format allows. The unbeatable record is over 93 trillion notes and 256 terabytes the data equivalent of 128,000 hours of movies. Part of the appeal of Black MIDI is watching videos of what keys would need to be pressed for the composition to be played on the piano. This often leads the genre to pay special attention to how the music appears visually, with some blackers even using programs that display the MIDI to animate in, creating images from hundreds of thousands of notes. The genre is often dramatic and bombastic, with high tempos, glissandi, and chords spanning many octaves. Death Waltz is the famous face of the black midi genre, which is a little unfortunate, because this specific upload is a lie. What do I mean by this? Well, for starters, Death Waltz isn't really a waltz at all. Waltzes are characterized by their 3 beats per measure time signatures, and are often graceful and elegant so that couples can slow dance to them. Death Waltz, by contrast, has 4 beats per measure, and is incredibly loud, fast, and intricate, in keeping with the black midi style. Death Waltz is very clearly not a waltz, so it begs the question, why was it titled that way? It's because Death Waltz is the incorrect name for the piece in question. The name Death Waltz comes from the song Fairy's Air and Death Waltz, composed in 1980 by the now-deceased American composer John Stump. However, this piece is not your typical waltz either. Fairy's Air is tough to listen to, and has some similarities with Black Midi in just its sheer note volume, but it's also famous for its absurd directions, instructing musicians to release the penguins, slap their own thighs, and set off light explosives among other things. As a result, the sheet music has been passed around among many musicians because of its sheer entertainment value. The whole piece of music is crazy and not intended for anything more than a laugh, though a live rendition of it did get done by the Colorado State Music Teachers Association on video in 2009. Dang, oh, wait! <laughs> <laughs> The reasons behind the piece we know and love on YouTube being titled Death Waltz aren't clear, but with a little digging, the real name is. What is the name of the piece? Well, looking at the video you can see UN Owen was her in parentheses. This is also not quite the correct name, but it gets us in the right direction. UN Owen was her is a song composed by the Japanese game developer Zune. Zune is famous for creating a series of independent bullet hell video games called the Toho Project, or just Toho for short. These games have a significant fan base in both Japan and Western countries. UN Owen Was Her first appeared in the sixth game in the series in 2002, and is the main theme of the antagonistic vampire Flandre Scarlet. The name of the song is a reference to Agatha Christie's mystery novel, and then there were none in which a cast of characters each receive enigmatic invitations. The spouse of the person who sent out the invitations is called UN Owen, which can be read as unknown. In Toho, Flandre Scarlet is locked in her family's mansion for hundreds of years, which relates to the novel since in the context of the other characters in the game, her existence is unknown. UN Owen was her as a beloved track by both Zune and the wider community, and has been remixed numerous times over the past few decades. 
This track was arranged in 2004 by Japanese arranger Beat Mario, as part of an album of Toho remixes by independent music group Cool and Create. On this album, the track was titled Final Savage Sister Flandre S, referring to Flandre Scarlet. This specific remix is the version featured in Death Waltz, and is probably the most accurate title you could give the track. A source MIDI was created based on Beat Mario's remix, and a video of it was uploaded to Japanese video streaming site Nico Nico Doga in 2009. In March of 2010, Korean YouTube user Qrep7 re-uploaded the video to YouTube with the name Death Waltz John Stump, possibly confusing it due to the fact that both songs are almost impossible to play. This widely viewed upload was taken down sometime between 2011 to early 2013, according to the Wayback Machine. But further renderings of the MIDI in different programs and other re-uploads sprung up in its place, as a reaction to the initial video's success, cementing the misnomer. In most circles, Final Savage Sister is still mistitled to this day. There have been multiple attempts to correct this mistake, including this video you're watching, but these efforts are not enough to separate Death Waltz and Final Savage Sister from each other for many viewers. And there you have it! That's the story of how a Japanese game soundtrack remix was conflated with a joke piece of American music, with the misconception being passed down even now, over 10 years later. This story is interesting to me because it highlights the degree that people are susceptible to taking information at face value. It takes way less effort to create false information than it actually does to debunk it, and it can be difficult to bring corrections to the attention of everyone that should see it. While it probably doesn't matter that much in the case of Death Waltz, it's a prime example of how easily lies can be propagated, and how sticky they can be even after they're shown to be false. This has been Out of Characters, signing off until next time.